Whoosh, that's how fast our news drive by today. Watch them right here, right now. <laughs> Greetings from us and welcome to Rum Rum, the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and to our regular news roundup, our weekly sim racing news. Welcome to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. If you have any news for us, send us a mail to news at rumrum.net. This video will be over faster than you can say if Verstappen is right about virtual Le Mans, so pay close attention, today is a small-ish one. Race Room had the tiniest of updates this week, just correcting the bumps in Daytona, and Verstappen has partnered with EA, but even after reading the marketing fluff three times, we don't really know what that means. We think it's just him getting a metric ton of money to have EA.com plastered on his helmet, but maybe he can bring some sense into EA and them making a good F1 sim for once, followed by a politician telling the truth and the Easter Bunny marrying Santa Claus. In case you still haven't tried Beam and G on your wheel, first, why not? And second, they have just released a hotfix with a change lock with more fixes than your car will need after turn one in an open lobby. Level fixes include missing road material on the procedural track time trials at the ETK Driver Experience Center, Johnson Valley gets a hole in the highway closed, low detail road markings refined, console errors fixed and something listed as fixed antenna collision, which honestly raises more questions than it answers. West Coast has fixed the collision surface on the quarry support structure and a hole in the terrain near one of the highway overpasses, and East Coast has fixed floating trees, which wouldn't be an issue if they weren't also indestructible. Johnson Valley also received optimizations to the truck mesh Industrial side has improved the performance of the tall plants on the map, low end GPU owners rejoice, and all the maps had their depth maps updated, hopefully making them look even better. On to the cars, there has been an issue with brake differential steering when a tire was removed which has been fixed and an issue more for motors where rotators weren't able to be used for speedometer data. The SP Dune Kicker has had its steering lock fixed and the Rock Basher has had some information added and the engine brake group fixed. The Gavril Barstow has had an issue where the engine would continue running after it had been severed from the subframe fixed, the FPU Widra has had production information added and the Autobelo Stambecco now spawns in traffic when enabled. Speaking of traffic, the EA was tweaked with their turning being improved, although at this moment whether that is referencing to smoothness or sticking between the lines we don't know, and the speed limits on the main highway in Johnson Valley have been increased. From now on also the police will continue to chase you if you get out of your car when in a chase. Other notable fixes and changes in this 0.27.2 release are fixes with the UI in the map overview view, the next mission button sometimes not working and the garage mode being able to be opened when it shouldn't. The audio has been tweaked and performance improved and if you happen to have a PXN V10 wheel, the binding should now be fixed. Another raft of fixes and another encouragement to give BIMNG a go if you haven't already. SCS Software posted a blog of sorts this week documenting their visit to Scania's demo center in Södertälje. And my apologies if I butchered the name of the place. No video with this one, but some lovely snaps of the newest iterations of the Scania S and R series caps fitted with their latest generations of engines. The Super Inline 6 at 560 HP, the 590 HP V8 and the return of the King, the mighty 770 HP V8 finally claiming the crown back from Volvo in the highest power output in the game. SCS did note that how long it will take to get these engines into the sim is not known at the moment, but we're all very happy to see this kind of work continuing by the Euro Truck Simulator developers and can't wait to see them in the game. 
And speaking further about SCS Truck Simulators, the Cistern trailers are now fully part of the games and will be deployed with the 1.47 update of both. Straight for games. There's a name you might not have heard before, but it might be a name you don't hear for the last time. Ian Bell finally has a website after disappearing from Slightly Mad Studios after they were bought by Codemasters. Yes, the king of sim racing... PR is back. While nothing is immediately on the roadmap, other than Bell's characteristic charm and lofty goals from the racing simulation games he's helped develop, there are currently two staff members listed on the website, although the LinkedIn page shows more. The ones we know of through their news page are Henrik Ross, a Lemar legend, and A.G. Weber, longtime sim racing developer and racing enthusiast, with Ben Collins, yes, that Ben Collins, consulting. Bell's plans as ever are as well formed as a gelatinous cube and as ambitious as in the project car's development days. Weber has been given the responsibility of building a whole new game engine from scratch, while Rose and Collins will undoubtedly be a force to refine that engine to the standards us sim racers expect. While Ian Bell has repeatedly been spoken of as king of bullshit, he is certainly putting all the right eggs in his basket to make something potentially interesting. Not game changing, but if it introduces more people to the hobby like Project Cars did, then there's still hope. And the name of the studio comes from what looks like, from a wireframe, the rally version of the Ford Escort MK1 with a 1.8 liter 9200 RPM straight 4 engine. So at least the off road performance should be up to Project Cars 2 standards. What the future of straight 4 holds, time will tell, but as always, we'll be here to report on the latest. Hey, are you missing our commentated races? You won't for long anymore, as starting next Sunday we'll be broadcasting the ASRC IndyCar series. While we miss the first three races, we're for sure going to be present from the next race on, which is, tighten your seatbelts, the Indy 500! And as the ASRC community races on R Factor 2, they are going to be using the official Dallara IR18 from the sim, which means quite realistic racing. After this, it'll be a weekly race going on to Milwaukee, Cleveland, Mid Ohio, Watkins Glen, and Motegi with a healthy mix of ovals and road, just like in the real life IndyCar. ASRC is the acronym for the Advanced Simulation Racing Club, a community that mostly does open wheeler series with the occasional rooftop series in between, like a soon to be started Clio series. They race on R Factor 2 exclusively. Once again, Serta and Cody will be commentating these races. As Aike is driving another series on Sundays, he won't be able to join us for most of them. Hopefully he will be able to be with us for the one or the other, as we enjoy his company as much as he enjoys commentating. Gentlemen and gentlewomen, start your engines. Patrons allow us to ignore any YouTube bullshit and allow us to invest in high quality sim racing journalism like Sim Racing Expo or buying hard and software without strings attached. Amongst other perks, becoming a patron will fix your name for posterity like this, but you'll also get to know what we plan and what we're doing, so a big thank you to our patrons. If you come here regularly, please consider subscribing. While they are working on getting their quarterly drop ready and are publishing release candidate after release candidate, Studio 397 still has the time to work on corrections to the ever popular GT3 cars. First thing that they've done is what they call phase one of the balance of performance across all 14 official GT3 cars they have published. They call it phase one because they know and want you to know a BOP is always an ongoing process that is near impossible to get right the first time. Expect them, as they themselves expect, to publish further BOP refinements over the next weeks. 
While they were already fiddling with the cars, they added the newest improvements with regards to tires that they have developed, as well as the rest of the physics improvements like tender springs, shift protection, which by the way does not feel right, new ABS and TC logic and compatibility with the new R-Factor 2 sound engine we talked about a while ago. Notice they did not say they had added new sounds to it. They also want you to know the Radical and Mercedes cars are decidedly not finished and they know they will for sure be working on those for the next weeks to get them right. Two known issues are that some cars images vibrate when in the garage and that the default setups are not improved yet and neither are they in line with all the changes. We won't bore you reading each and every one of the changes in the cars, a long list, but if you are interested, see the link in a description of the video. Nothing boring in our video, so go check the playlist to the left or the video to the right. Until next time, save fuel, collect pickup, and we'll see each other on the podium.